Hi all, welcome on Dev Stack. So in the last video, we stored our token into the secure places with help of this logic. I already told that the same logic we will use on the sign up page also, because after successfully registering our user, we need a token to validate or authenticate the user with the backend. So we had to again call back a login. REST API after successfully registering a user. So that's why I already wrote the whole code and uh, pasted over here. You can compare this code with the sign in code, both are the same. The additional thing is that after the successfully registering a user, I am storing the response in the response register variable. If the response register variable is 200 or 201 status code, then I am calling the login REST API over here and the same we are storing the token into the secure places. The logic is same as I applied on the sign in page. I already uploaded this code onto the GitHub repository. You can get this github repository link from the description so you don't have to code all these things just you have to fork it and also give a start to motivate me to uploading a code daily on the github please support me so i can upload the code on the github daily and you will get benefited from here also so so the thing is that if our response of the register, the response register status code is other than the 200. So what I did that I am just calling the snack bar here in the else condition. If any network error is happen on the sign up page, I will show a user that the network error is happen with help of a snack bar. You can implement this logic simply using a scaffold.app.show snack bar function. Let's test it, then we will go on the logic of this video. If I will go on the sign up page and I will register a new user like uh, example will be the username and uh, email will be example at the date gmail.com again we have to pass the password of length 8 and if I will hit the sign up button then after successfully registering a user it will log in with the blog app rest server you will see the token which we will get here so the response we are getting that username is already taken maybe i already registered with the example so let me change the example username with one two three again i will click on the sign up and let's see that we got the token back here and the token will be stored onto the secure places and we land into the home page of the blog app which we created into the last video so we have to work on this the home page thing on this video but i have to say you that uh, if i will go back then we will come out from the blog app and i will again click a blog app then you will see that we are going on to the welcome page but we already log in or successfully registered with the blog app why we are coming on the welcome page right now so we have to implement a logic that after successfully registering a user with the blog app or res or after successfully login the user with the blog app we always have to go on to the home page so let's implement that logic for that we have to go on to the main dot dot file and we have to first convert the main dot dot file into the stateful widget in the stateful widget i will create some variable 
let me create all the variable then I will explain one by one so in the page I will store the welcome page as a initial variable so this page will be used here let me implement it first that uh, I have to use the init state also so in the init state I will create a method call check login it will be a, a sync and await type also and this method I will call inside the init state what we will do in this method is that we will check the user is successfully login or not but how we will do that you know that uh, in the last video we stored a token into the secure places let me import the secure places then you will get a better understanding so in the secure places we store the token so what we will do that we will first check the token is available onto the secure places or not if the token is available onto the secure places then the user is successfully logged in with the blog app if the token is not available it's mean we have to log in first so I had to create an instance of the secure places to create it I will use the final storage and the class is flutter secure storage it will create the instance of the secure storage package and here what we will do is we will call the read method and we will pass the key value so what was the our key value our key value was the token and we stored the token into the this key value so to get back that token we had to pass the key value here and uh, if the token is not null it's mean that the user is successfully logged in with the blog app so we will update this page with the home page which we created right now and we can write the else condition also or else we can left it because we already set the page onto the welcome page but let me write the else condition also to set the welcome page and we just have to this we just have to pass this page instead of this welcome page because we already storing the all the thing like uh, we are checking the user that uh, user is successfully login with the blog app or not then we are updating the page value so we have to just restart the whole app to to make the changes uh, we have to just stop it and restart it again the app is restarting right now and we land into the welcome page so the logic we wanted to implement is successfully implemented so let's work on to the home page right now so in the home page there will be the three tab first one will be the home tab where all the block related thing will be there and the second one will be the profile tab where the user profile data will be populated and the 
there will be a third tab will be a floating action button with the notch where we will have a plus button in the plus button if i will click on the plus button then we will land into the page where we can post the blog so let's implement it first so in the scaffold widget we already have a floating action button property so let's use it that property in the floating action button we have to pass the floating action button like this right now we will pass the null because we don't have to use it and to make it on the middle we have to use the floating action button location in the floating action button location we will provide the center dock so if i will click on the control s and hot reload will work then we can see that we have the floating action button in the middle similarly we have a bottom navigation bar property onto the scaffold where we can use the custom bottom app bar to implement our custom bottom navigation bar in the bottom app bar we can provide the shape also in the shape what i will do that i will use circular notch rectangular and the save and we have to do the thing called notch margin and the notch margin we can provide 12 and we have a child parameter also inside the child parameter i will use the container in the container the height will be like 60 and the color i will use is white only right now so we can change the color in the future lecture also so in the child what i will use that i will use the row because we have to implement two tabs inside this bottom navigation bar in the row we have a children in the children we can use the icon button in the icon button we can set the icon so let's set the icon like uh, icons dot home and right now we will set the on place null similarly we will have a second icon will be the profile so the name of the icon will be the person hit the save and you can see that two icon is here but we have to set the main axis alignment as uh, main axis alignment space between hit the save and the thing is that we achieved the partial goal we can change the main axis alignment evenly then see the changes that it's not perfect now let's change it like space around and it's not perfect also so what we can do that we will use the spread between same fundamental and we will add the padding over here so in the padding we will use the symmetric padding and i will provide the horizontal edge 20.0 and now the thing is perfect in the 
icon button you can see the property that we have a icon size we can increase the icon size also so let's increase the icon size and make it 40 let's see how much it will so it's good to have icon size as a 40 and the profile page also we will do the same thing now it's look perfect maybe we can reduce the size of the icon a little bit less so here you can see the thing is we have the icons but the color and the background is not looking great but we can work on that on the, the next video we have to do the one thing also that in the floating action button we have to provide the child and our child will be a text because I want to make the child as a plus button and uh, I can set the style of this like uh, we can increase the font size of the plus button to 30 something so it will will not visible or it's visible okay make it 35 so it's look perfect that what we wanted is achieved but the logic of the clicking on to the home page or profile page is not completed yet so let's work on this thing on to the next video so at the end I just want to thank you the all the subscriber who subscribe this channel because this channel is early stage and your support and your help is keep me motivated for this and uh, i just want to say all of you thank you for your support happy coding and uh, stay tuned for the next video thank you